Hey, welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. Uh, we were just having a conversation that would have been good on the podcast, but during podcast prep, we we tend to tangent and have to stop ourselves yeah. because we're like, oh, this this should have been just on the cast because it's a decent conversation. But now that we've stopped it, we won't naturally get back into it and the conversation will never actually happen. We might. Exactly. So we'll thank you, it. Dave, for the 20 months. That's insane, dude. Oh, thank my you God. Thank you very much for the Dave. support. That is great. Dave is an Glad OG. we're not having that conversation. <laughs> God damn it, Tom. <laughs> I almost said Adam there. Fandemonia says, right, welcome no, to the 72 Pin Connector there. podcast. I ate steak. He already knows. <laughs> He's already in on our, <laughs> our bit. inside bits and memes. I made sous vide pork chops. Uh, they were great. I need to work out the. still I'm having a little bit of issues working out exactly how um like the flavorings and stuff i should throw in the bag I, this was just salt pepper onion powder garlic powder uh and they were fucking fantastic uh but yeah i, I feel like it needs a little bit something else to go with it throw some mint in that shit dude that's what i'm thinking i don't have i don't have like fresh mint laying around here i could throw in like some altoids in the bag i don't know if that'd have the same effect i don't okay i wouldn't really recommend that <laughs> You could try so long. Um, <laughs> Anemonius is calling out that he ordered Applebee's steak and immediately regretted it. Oh, I actually don't hate no. their steak, but I also anticipate it being like, yeah, out of a microwave. Exactly. You you know it's not going to be good, but hey, it's, it's steak. Set the expectations appropriately, and I think it's okay. I don't <laughs> think it tastes bad. Yeah. Welcome just, to the seventy-two pin connector, where we only miss open nets. It's like, um, um, yeah, go ahead. So, okay. All right. Let's, let's get into it. You know, it's got to happen. I know it's got to happen. Game Boy Advance. All right. So the OG Game Boy Advance, honestly, I fucking hate the OG Game Boy Advance screen. I think it's got, the system itself is nice. It's good to hold. The button placement's perfect. It lasts forever on two fucking goddamn double A batteries. Um, but that screen is impossible. With the Game Boy Advance, if you aren't aware, if you're uh, if you're kind of young when that thing released, it doesn't have a backlit screen. It is an LCD screen that you need a separate light to be able to see in the dark. Uh, I remember literally like <laughs> hanging out under the lamp yeah. in, in my family's family room playing nope. Castlevania because that game was so fucking dark. Remember trying to play on a car trip, but it's nighttime oh and you God. like you have to play like when you pass by the street light and you can kind of see yep. a little bit, then you can play a little bit. Exactly. Yep. I used to do that in Zelda. I would play pause, wait for a like a street light, unpause, try mm. to finish one room in the game. And <laughs> uh yeah, it was it was great. The people don't know the challenge. Yeah. But, to this day, I still don't know if it's actually a law or my parents just didn't want me to do it. But we had a minivan and I was never allowed turning on the lights in the back. That is straight up. To, that is straight that is, up not a law. Yeah, it is. It is straight dad materials what that is. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's annoying I've to drive with the light on and that's it. it. <laughs> so, well, luckily, though, without the backlit screen, you had the option of buying the aftermarket uh, attachment abomination things you could add onto it. Like... Remember the, I don't know if they had it for the, I'm sure they did, but I had a Game Boy Color and oh there, God, was, no, there was like this. a, there was did a, you have the... it was a, it was a whole package. It was, there was a piece you put on the back that would extend the battery life. And then it had like yep. handles to hold on to kind of like, so it felt a little bit more like a controller. And then that also wrapped over top of the buttons to give you like bigger, different buttons that just like laid over the regular buttons to press yep. them. And then okay. did you also it had, have the one with the yeah yeah the oh yeah and glass. then yeah and yeah. then over yeah. the top it's literally a magnifying glass that sticks out from the screen and it has lights on it to to actually illuminate the screen so that you can see it. It was awful. I love and those things. It was amazing. I, really I mean, do. at the time, you know, that's it worked and that's what you needed because there wasn't a backlit screen. But oh well, man, was what that an abomination! <laughs> They also sold the literally a book reader light yeah. form as well. Yep. Yeah. The worm light. Do you guys remember yep. the Nyko worm light? Nyko, the whole fucking company was built on the backs of those fucking like crazy straw looking LED <laughs> on a stick lights. 
the like entire people's livelihoods were built attaching tiny shitty flashlights to Game Boy pockets and Game Boy colors. Yeah, but even uh, that was uh that was better though. I think that was a little more dignified than the freaking magnifying oh, glass yeah, sure. flashlight. Well, that Frankenstein Game Rock Boy always made me think <laughs> is your grandma playing? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, it's big screen. Now, all this yeah, said, was to get to the point of um we started talking about Game Boy Advance micros. Mm. And I still hold up until the 3DS, that was the best handheld screen made. It was a Agreed. small miniature, like probably about the width of an original Game Boy with an actual full color backlit screen that was really pretty. Yeah. But the screen was only like a, it was only like a three and a half inch screen though. Yeah, um, it was tiny as shit. And that's the reason I never liked the Game Boy Micro is that uh, I played a lot of RPGs, including what uh, Heroic Saint calls out Golden Sun on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, and on the Micro, the text was just too tiny. Like Golden Sun, you could do it, but there was some squinting. Uh, Final Fantasy, nah, no fucking way. You could not play the handheld Final Fantasies on that thing. Um, Dude, you should never play Final Fantasies handheld at that age. At that era, that was dude, still straight up JRPG, man. That is dude, not for handheld. It is still straight up JRPG. And uh, I will I will defend that. I'll say Final Fantasy is better played on the Game Boy Advance ports than on the Super Nintendo, mostly because they're it just had like a couple little quality of life enhancements, sleep mode, save anywhere, like stuff that that you would have wanted, but you didn't have because, oh, well, if they're buckling up for Final Fantasy on the Super NES, they're here for six hours. The Game Boy Advance was the ports were built with the understanding, just like A Link to the Past. They might have 15 minutes. They might have five minutes. Let's build so they can pick up and shut down in as little time as possible just so they can get a tiny bit of gaming in. Uh, so I, I, I will I will still defend those. I get that. Like, I get that they made good quality of life. But if anyone is playing a JRPG in 15-minute increments, they might beat a game every three years. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> that's, is not... That's not that wrong. That is not the audience. <laughs> that is not wrong at all. <laughs> so, like, um, those games are made for a special type of player with a special amount of time dedication. Yeah. So what were you guys' uh, favorite you Game Boy Advance games? Metroid Fusion. Done. That's definitely up there. Um, Pokemon Fire Red, the remake of Fire Pokemon. But um, That's super solid. I will Just, say this. Um, I never played it, but they had a Tony Hawk Pro Skater port on Game Boy Advance that after reading or watching a doc diary on that game should have never existed, and they made that console scream into its knees. <laughs> because of what they were doing in that game. <laughs> like an actual 3D environment rendered in a fucking Game Boy Advance. That's absurd. Oh. Did you guys it's ever impressive? <laughs> did you guys ever play those uh there were like uh, there might have just been two Dragon Ball Z RPG games. The Legacy of not. Goku. I heard those were actually really though. good. Yeah, those were great. I've always avoided any DBZ game unless it's a stage fighter. Because I think that they're going to be a little too campy. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's DBC the show. It literally campy. just goes through the story I'm, of the show. True. Is is it basically? But they were really good. And then um, there was another one called. Was it called Supersonic Warriors? Also for the Game Boy Advance, and it was like a. It wasn't. It was kind of a stage fighter, but a lot of it took place in the air, and the movement and combat was really cool for for that style of, like it fit the the Dragon Ball Z kind of theme really well i had a lot of fun with that one i never hear much about it though i've never heard of it it was good but it was cool i was also never owned a game boy advance so i some of my favorite games on the gba were castlevania like circle of moon started out and it was good but the issue was the game was super dark and you sometimes you would actually lose your character in the dark backgrounds because nothing stood out oh so it made some fights ridiculously hard when they didn't need to be. Um, but in Harmony of Dissonance and especially Area of Sorrow, they really cracked that, made it a lot brighter, made it pop, uh, and really, really tuned up the graphics so that like the active parts and inactive parts would be easily recognized as you're going through the game. Um, hmm. But it's like, I love Metroid Fusion to death. And if you were 
obsessed with that genre back in the day, Metroidvanias. Um, the Castlevania games on GBA was just more of the same goodness that you came to expect. You ready for uh, Blasphemous stuff right here? You've never played a Castlevania? No. My favorite Again. Castlevania is Castlevania 64. No. And I, act <laughs> and I actually no. find the generic normal layout of Castlevania slightly boring. Uh, so that's it for the 72 Pin Connected <laughs> Podcast. We are currently accepting uh, submissions for co-hosts slash co-owners of 72 Pin Connector uh, to apply, uh, inquire within at me and give me your Castlevania uh, resume. I've never played really a Castlevania game either. I, and you like technically, Fusion, technically, I, I have. Like technically, I have. I played a demo of whichever PS3 thing which I know doesn't play like the old Castlevania games, but I played one of those. It was like a a third-person action. It played a lot like the old God of War games. Yeah, okay. they're, they're the fake Castlevania games. That yeah, wants I, I know about. that the p fans of Castlevania probably hate those, but it seemed like a fine action game from some yeah, of the I mean, that's what I That's what yeah. I thought about Castlevania 64 as well. Yeah. And they did I mean, secret endings <laughs> in that game really well. I I have trouble taking anything seriously I've heard about Castlevania 64 because it is like it is up there with Superman 64 as one of the most widely panned games of all time. <laughs> that game is not a bad game. Now it may uh, not is be it just a because it's not what game, people wanted. That is no exactly. like critical reviewers fucking hate this. This isn't coming from like fans. Like people. But I had fucking Game Informer back when Castlevania 64 came out, and it was panned for a reason. You would play any other game that wanted to try to be a generic action game, it was guaranteed to be better than the shit that was Castlevania 64. I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was a bad game. I mean, it's okay to it enjoy bad games. I enjoy a lot of bad games. No, I honestly don't see how that would be panned as a bad game. I thought the level layout was fine. Some of the puzzles were actually really interesting. I really enjoyed that game. All right. Maybe maybe that's one thing that we can do for a retro stream is go back and play some old games that were critically planned. I'll, I'll have to play Castlevania 64 and uh, Irk, I'm going to make you play Superman. And I, like I said, I, I'm no stranger to really enjoying games that critically don't like. Uh, Digimon World, the very first one, it wasn't too highly acclaimed. I think it's one of my favorite games of all time. It is an excellent game. It's just, it came out in an era where the consoles couldn't handle the load screens. Yeah. That's always a big issue. And frankly, something I'm running into in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, I recently ran into a quest where there's a lot of different ways to pull it off. And I knew exactly how I wanted things to go. Like, I knew what I was in for. And I knew, like, who I needed to convince, who I needed to shoot. I'm leaving things intentionally super generic. But I knew what I had to do and how I wanted to pull it off. Unfortunately, because I'm an idiot, I kept missing shots or killing somebody I didn't mean to or not killing somebody that I did mean to. And I had to reload like six or seven times. It was really annoying, but it was it was me reloading. I wasn't happy with the quest outcome because of my own lack of performance. So I decided, let's reload. Safe scum. But it's like... Maybe, I don't know, Adam, what would you say on those load times? They're not awful, but it's what, 45 seconds to a minute? To, load time you know to, to reset. Yeah, something like that. It's not awful. It's no you know, like, GTA San Andreas, but... Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not the worst thing, and oh my god, reloading GTA Five when I encountered the same thing was like minutes of load times. But it, it really shows me that if you want a game to be... Yo, super pop in, pop out, reload from your mistakes. It's got to be less than 10 seconds. It has to be like maybe not super Meat Boy levels of instant retry after you die, but it's got to be better. Well, nothing's Mr. Meat Boy because failing was built into that game. Exactly. You're, it's designed for failure, which I think is fantastic. It really, really lets you try some interesting, stupid stuff that you wouldn't otherwise because... You're not losing anything. You just mm -hmm. pop back up to the beginning and you're done. That game in uh, Hotline Miami. That game in Hotline Miami had the same kind of thing going for it. Yeah. In that respect. Well, I still remember my first time ever seeing someone beat a level on Meat Boy. I'm like, holy shit, that's all the dead use. 
Like that was a really cool moment the first time you ever saw that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I saved some scummed cyberpunk. It's too many S sounds in there. Um, save scum cyberpunk. <laughs> save scum cyberpunk. Did you get a lot of time uh, in cyber, cyberpunk this week? I did. I did. I feel like I'm, I don't know, maybe, maybe about halfway through. I've been doing all the side quests. I've been taking my sweet ass time. And one thing that I've noticed in these big ass RPGs is if I really, really try, I could probably complete that game. Like at least the main quest real quick, one week, 30 hours straight shot, flying through it, speed running. Basically. I don't like playing games that way. I especially don't like playing big ass RPGs that way. So cyberpunk, not only have I been like doing all the side content, but I haven't been rushing it. I've been taking my time, driving around, enjoying things. I am not optimizing for saving frames or time. Um, and I feel like I'm about halfway through. Uh, I'm still really enjoying it, with the exception of one quest that I lost 15 minutes to. Um, so I'm, I'm supposed to go do a thing, and I get to this part. There's an objective, and I got to walk through a door. It's right there. I open it. I walk through it. And the, the quest trigger that shows me where the next objective is says, Hey, buddy, uh, wa walk through that door. You, you just got to just gotta walk through the door. Like, I'm, I'm walking through the door, and I turn around, and I look, and the little, like, arrow is pointing to the door that I just walked through. It said, Hey, can you, can you walk through the door, please? I said, But I, I, I'm right here, bro. Like, literally, I've walked through the door. I'm right fucking here. No, you got to walk through the door, man. I can't proceed until you walk through that door. So I actually had to reload not one, not two, but five different saves because because Cyberpunk, I am obsessively saving manually everywhere. Every 10 <laughs> minutes, I'm pausing to save the game because this shit happens. You never know when something's going to break. So I was obsessively saving like after every single like stealth kill. I... I had to go back five different saves to reload to a point where apparently the quest trigger wasn't broken anymore, and then I could proceed. All in all, I lost 15 minutes, but goddamn, that took me out of the experience. It, it took me from, here's this thing, it's important to the story, oh my god, I'm invested, oh my god, I gotta do this thing because this stuff is happening and it's important to me and I feel for the characters in this situation, to, will Jerry actually walk out of the door this time, or is he just gonna stand there in the middle? Jerry's not moving. God damn it. Escape, load, <laughs> back again. Jerry, you feel like walk... Jerry still doesn't feel like walking through the door. Okay. <laughs> damn it, Jerry! Escape, load, go back. All right, now I've got to yeah. kill these three guys. Oh my God, Jerry walked through the door. Um, and it was, it was fucking <laughs> shitty. So I still stand by the, the biggest fan of cyberpunk right now is Ubisoft. I was telling you guys about this right now because they are so glad that Cyberpunk is taking all this flack and heat from its bugs because for the love of God, Valhalla on old-gen systems is some of the buggiest shit I've seen on an old-gen console. Really? It is awful. And it's like the AI bugs out sometimes, the fucking models glitch out, the saves are lost constantly, their cloud-saving mechanism, their cloud saving mechanism is possibly the worst I've ever seen. Oh my god! Like I, I know of someone who's lost multiple hours multiple times. Jesus, man! At one point, losing fifteen hours. What the fuck? I would quit the like, game. Like this is Ubisoft is loving that Cyberpunk is getting this flack because it should be them right now. Like under normal circumstances, they'd be getting torn apart right now from this shit. God damn! All right. So <laughs> yeah, that biggest fans of Cyberpunk, Ubisoft. Right, right when uh, I thought they were my favorite devs of the year, or for the last couple of years, they were <laughs> So now we have the holy trinity of bugs now? Ubisoft, uh, Bethesda, and CD Projekt Red? I, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's really unfortunate. Rewind a year, who would have thought uh, CD Projekt Red would have been in on that? Yeah, uh, Right? Well, it didn't, yeah, you didn't know The Witcher, uh, wasn't that pretty buggy on launch, and then they fixed a bunch of stuff? Yeah, The Witcher 3 was notoriously buggy on launch, and it's still a little buggy sometimes, but it's mostly good. Um, so I, I had a fun quest in cyberpunk. And again, keeping all this stuff generic is really difficult. <laughs> um, but depending on 
how you shoot people, what you shoot them with, what mods you have installed, and if you're really trying, your shots can be non-lethal. You can play the game in such a way, even without a weapon that's specifically marked as non-lethal. Like, you can do this with lethal weapons. You can shoot people in such a way that leaves them alive and unconscious and not fighting. Um, so, there was a quest where... I, I specifically, like, I went in and I didn't know how this was going to play out. I didn't save scum this one. And I was trying to do something without killing somebody because I really didn't want to kill them, but I knew there was going to be a fight. And so in the game, in the heat of the moment, I'm specifically ending, or like aiming at limbs. I'm aiming at center mass. I'm using like lower powered gear, specifically so I won't just totally tear this person's seven new assholes as I shotgun them in the face. <laughs> um, and what's cool is that the quest design actually played this out. Like, uh, apparently, um, cause I, I looked at other ways this quest could be done. Somebody'd be like, oh my god, you didn't have to fucking kill him. What are you doing, you savage? Uh, but when I went through it, they're like, oh, so you did do this thing, and nobody died? Wow, that's amazing. And I got, like, some kudos from in-game characters because of the way I played it. But it wasn't a cutscene. It wasn't a, you know, press X to murder this guy or press Y to not murder this guy. It literally just responded to the gameplay and how I was shooting them and what guns I was shooting them with. So it was a really natural way for that quest to flow in multiple different directions, even if it wasn't like anything big. Like it, from what it looks like right now, it's just flavor text. But that's still really fucking cool. That is really fucking cool. And frankly, something that I've been waiting for video games to do for a long time is respond to exactly how you pull off a quest um, and let you improv. So this is coming from the same game that can't remember your dialogue options from literally the option I before. I know, <laughs> I know, and it pisses me off because they're like, you can see the writing on the wall, man. They have the ability, they have the writing chops and the tech to pull this kind of shit off. And then you choose Corpo and realize that the only thing you did is you lost half of the game's dialogue options. Like... Oh, man, I cannot wait for this thing to get fixed. And I don't even know if that's something that they can fix real easily, but... Oh, that may not get more fixed, man. I know, I know. And that really fucking disappoints me because there's so much potential here. There is so much potential here. But, so we'll, yeah. we'll see. I'm excited for it. See, so yeah, that's something I actually didn't play any at all this week. Oh, Wow. So I put a lot of time in something I haven't put a lot of time in in a long time. Um, <laughs> I took off half a day Wednesday, all Thursday, had yesterday off. I put a fuck ton of time into Tarkov. Following in my shoes. I like it. Yes, I am. Like, I, this is the most fun I've had in Tarkov. Like, this wipe. This is my first time coming into a wipe where I actually know what's up. I'm not good, but I know what's up. So, like, I know I'm going into these things. I need to save this. I need this. I'm looking for these. I know where this kind of loot spawns. And it's really helped because you level up faster. You enjoy the game more because you're getting these vendors that will give you shit cheaper. You understand how the game mechanics work for making guns, modding guns. It's just so nice. Um, the game itself uh, has still been running fine. I feel that their servers are getting overloaded though. And queue times are a little worse than they were. Yeah. They're getting way worse. better than last year, this time. Yeah. But for you're sure. you could still be sitting there for a three, four minute queue. Yeah. And certain, certain times of night on certain maps, maybe longer. I had a like seven, eight minute queue. Um, I think last night actually. Yeah. That's, that's pretty long queue. I think I would have backed out and tried to re queue. It, it, eventually I got in. Yeah, it's but been a yeah, lot of fun. I've been playing a ton too, grinding it out. Adam's I, finally uh, got into one of the new guns. Yeah, they had oh. the the Chris Vector. It it's got a really really fast fire rate, and it's just a blast to use. It's almost it's fun. It's a blast for you to use. I just like hearing you describe fast fire rate guns. Yeah, personally. it goes Bert. <laughs> Vector goes Bert. Vector goes Bert. Um, there was actually a clip I watched of Landmark. I never view him as a comical dude. And he was explaining one of <laughs> the new guns. Normal. It only shoots once every two seconds. 
He's like, oh, that sucks. Because I wanted to go burr, 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 with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard him do that. I just laughed out loud. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't know this dude could, you know, just have fun. When I fire a gun, I want it to sound like a swarm of bees. And P90 go like burr. Burr. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. It shoots so, faster speaking, than the P90. Speaking of P90 go burr, I was playing some uh, some Pavlov. And we all, because this, it was a 20 v 20, which is on a custom server. Like you can't get this normally, but it was 20 v 20. And we all had the great idea. We're on dust too. All right, everybody. Rush B. Brand new strategy. I've never heard this before in all of my years of gaming <laughs> is Rush B. So we all load ourselves up with Pro 90s. Um, that's what the P stands for. And we just walk in and burr. Uh, and it was great. We're literally in VR, all of us standing in a row, just marching forward like fucking redcoats <laughs> with our P90s, lighting it up. Uh, and it was it was something magical, let me tell you. There's some can New Year's magic happening that night. Can you explain to me how 20 players play on Dust 2? Um, well. Well? Well. Well? Like, that seems like it would be a slaughterhouse. I, it, gener it generally is. That's why they all the brought best, P90s. What, what do you think yeah. was going to happen? The, the best part about um, about VR Massive, and it's, it's the VR Massive custom service. The best part about VR Massive is just the amount of fucking grenades. Because you have that many people and that many grenades, buying three grenades and just spamming the fuck out of a certain location actually can get you some kills. Um, it's, been, it's been fun. Nice. Also... Okay, I've got a mechanics question for Rocket League. I clearly pushed this in, right? What? Like, you popped it. Let's see what happened. Um, no, you were no, slow. Okay. That's my okay. goal. You're just not good enough on, at the stealing yet. On just my screen, I, I actually pushed that into the net, and you did not. So, okay. Oh, I'm going to no. attribute that to some lag. So the server disagrees, Tom. Yes. Yes. All right. And I the will server take the server's word. The right. server is God. Yep. Whatever the server says goes. Sometimes, unfortunately. Um, but anyway, and that's why I always uh, lose. It's not because I'm I'm bad. It's no, the server blame the like servers. It. Yeah. Yeah. Easy excuse. Damn servers. I learned that back in the Halo Two days. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh. Pavlov, bunch of grenades, because you can buy up to three per round. Uh. You just start chucking. So what we started doing, and what they started doing, is we just. Hiding that tunnel along B, throwing grenades back and forth at each other and waiting for people to blow up, and that's that's the whole game. It was great. That sounds awful. It was fun. Because you're in VR, so when you're throwing grenades, it's not like you're just clicking, like you're actually physically throwing. Uh, and then we got to experimenting with cooking grenades, which is extra fun when you can't throw in real life because you're a video game player and you know you haven't done anything <laughs> useful them. in your life. How does yeah. cooking them help? You put a nice, uh, nice glaze, glaze on, them. on them. Yeah, yeah. Maybe so, some uh, thyme, some salt and pepper. So you basically activate it. So it's cook. It's clicking down, right? Like it's gonna explode in four seconds. You hit that. You go one, two. You throw on two, and hopefully by the time it reaches the other side, it explodes into somebody's face. The best part about Pavlov is because this is all based in real life physicality, thanks to the wonders of VR technology. People throw badly. So you get a nice cooked <laughs> grenade one second away from exploding. They throw it. It hits a wall. It bounces back at your team, and everybody dies. It's beautiful. It's just fucking beautiful. So, yeah, uh, Pavlov, if you don't have it, I'd still recommend it. It's great. I was going to ask you about that because I just saw 10v10 throwing nades down a tunnel. There's going to be more deaths of friendly fire. Than enemy fire. I think it. I think the server does twenty v twenty. Oh, 20 v twenty. Yeah, which I've been in on. I was thinking ten v ten. What the fuck? No, twenty v twenty. It's great. Man, I, I can't picture it. On I, that map, I would dude. love to join in on some VR fun like that. <laughs> it if is only there was a VR magical. headset that was at a price of I don't know six hundred dollars. Hmm, six hundred dollars. That would be, that would be nice. <laughs> would would this headset be made by like a probably an old computing company that's existed for mm, I don't know fifty years at this point, maybe uh, thirty years? Yeah, that's what I was maybe, thinking. But like something 
Packard Bell. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe HP. Some kind of like. Hold on. Hold Cosmo on. thing. Just... Or what's the oh, one? Oh no! What are, no! No! What's the no, one? What's it called? No. Oh no! 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 It's like a like when sound bounces off of uh, yeah, exactly. large surfaces. Yeah. Exactly. Like um, <laughs> a rev like an echo. Oh no! Wait. Yeah. Like okay. a no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Aren't those Fox, like? I don't know. I actually don't know what okay, this is. So uh, please. The HP, the HP reverb. reverb uh, is it called G two or something? The, whatever yep. the newer one is. Is it out yet? Uh, if it's not out yet, it's out soon. And it's got the off-ear audio that the Index pioneered. So you're getting the best VR audio that money can buy. So yeah, if those are like in stock or available or something, I might pick one up. They, I it. have only heard good but things. I just kind of assumed that either they're in like a pre-order type of stage and it'll be months or all sold out forever, like all the NVIDIA cards are and stuff. <laughs> so does that, I mean, obviously... Vive uses or they push everyone for open VR. Would mm -hmm. they be able to play Oculus games as well, or would they have to revive? Um, so the Oculus store, basically anything on the Oculus store that's exclusive has got to be run through Revive for any open VR okay. headset. Because you can thank fucking Oculus for that. You can't even blame Facebook because that's just straight up Oculus. Yeah, that, um, that was a pretty Facebook move there. Yeah, they they've just been dicks the whole time. But whatever. Um but yeah, Revive basically makes everything work fine. All right. I, I didn't know if it would... Since it wasn't the big dog, I didn't know if maybe they would let someone else in their ecosystem. Yeah. Nope. Um, HP has built a an open VR headset, so it works perfectly with Steam VR or just about most other things using the open VR platform. Um, but yeah, I've, I've heard great things about it. I haven't tried it yet. Hmm. Well, yeah, I've only tried two VR headsets. I've never even tried an Oculus of any form, which I actually kind of want to because I do anticipate it being of super high make quality. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure it is. So, I the Facebook, the Facebook stuff though still makes me a little nervous. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, that's why I'm talking just the hardware. I anticipate being of super high quality. I wouldn't want the rest of the bullshit that goes with it though. Mm -hmm. Either way, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, sounds like you've been having a really good time in Pavlov. Yeah, I, I will tell you this, though. Like, Pavlov is fun, but it it's Counter-Strike. It, it's a video game, and uh, you've definitely played a lot of things like it. Um, what you haven't experienced anything like, though, is being stuck in quarantine for, like, a year, the world being a dangerous, scary place, and instead... You have a couple drinks and you roam around Sweden for a hot minute. Uh, so Google Earth VR is a lifesaver and it is just a vibe. Let me tell you. So I got a little tipsy. I walked around Sweden, ran around <laughs> Switzerland. Um, there are people uploading like public use photos to Google Photos in 3D views. Like they've got a 3D camera that they just sit somewhere and take a picture. People have been apparently running around a lot of tourist sites over the past few years. I ran around a castle in Germany, like a tour, like room through room, following a tour group, running around and just looking at shit in a totally cool. different country during the time of a global pandemic. Uh, it was it was great. Uh, what was a little weird, though, is that there was clearly somebody, like, infatuated with the person taking pictures, so they were taking pictures of that person. So I'm walking around VR, I've, I've got my drink, like, I'm I'm chilling in this castle, I'm like, man, this is cool, and I turn around, I'm like, who the fuck are you, and why are you taking pictures of me? And as I walk through the place, they're always <laughs> behind me taking had, my picture. You had paparazzi. Like, Dude, seriously, this is freaking me out. It was scary. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> so I think I'm the perpetual buzzkill around here. Oh, I no. don't like what you just explained. It sounds really cool. But in general, I never got into the Google Earth VR thing. I love it. Uh, just about every weekend, at least once, I am in Google Earth VR roaming around exploring something. I just don't. I mean, I, I get it, kind of. But like, I no. Nah. Why not? Like, yeah. What a, I, do you like visiting places just to look around? I just find it kind of boring. Like, I'll do map sure. study. But if I'm not doing map study, like, I don't enjoy... Or GeoGuessr. 
If they had Google Earth VR GeoGuessr, okay. Oh, yeah. Now you might that have now be, you might, That's a hit waiting Now to you got me. I mean, I can't believe that actually doesn't exist yet, but yeah, honestly, that would just seems like a no brainer, no brainer for sure. <laughs> hey, Tom, yeah, I, I totally agree. Speaking of which, uh, if anybody yeah. hasn't heard of or played GeoGuessr, it's really cool. Uh, basically, yeah. they, they sit you down in some random location and you have to use Google Maps, like the street view thing to look around and try to figure out where you are. And then you guess on the map where you think you are and you get points depending on how far away your guess was from your actual location. So it's really cool because you, you can, you you like can use the... Guesses. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah, because they give you like a thermometer thing after the oh, first that, one, I think. Oh, that's new. I haven't seen that. I haven't played in a while either. Um, but it's really cool because, you know, most of the time you might be just out in the middle of nowhere and you're, you know... What does the landscape look like? Those trees look kind of, you know, Pacific Northwest or, and then all of a sudden oh, it's hey, like, there's... oh, you're in Argentina. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, but or there's other times. A car that passes by. And yeah. You're like, oh, wait, where's this license plate from? Exactly. That clearly looks European. Yeah. You can judge by the cars. Sometimes there's like signs. I mean, I've gotten lucky and you, you could see like what state in the U.S. it's in. And then, oh, you pass by a business called Town Name Business. And then you can narrow that down yep. or use like the state highways to narrow down your location. And I've got it to like within five meters of the, the place before. <laughs> nice. But it, it takes a yep. while if you do it that way. But there, there's different like modes you can play, like timed ones and limited guesses. And there's ones for like specific countries only or only, you know, only U.S. cities, like major cities or only cities that are like with big landmarks and then like Paris and stuff. So there's there's a lot there. It's pretty cool. And I think it's free. I don't think there's a yeah. There might be ads. Well, or something. I haven't, I haven't played it since it's developed into like a full scale game where you can play yeah. with multiple people. Like I haven't that, they've really branched out on that. But um, the one thing I always liked was you would play into stereotypes of what you think certain regions are like. Yep. And man, it blows your mind <laughs> on some of those stereotypes. <laughs> like people think Middle East super arid desert, and like you get this lush green landscape at certain spots, and people are like. What the fuck do you mean this is Lebanon? <laughs> <laughs> and just help God help you if you get somewhere in the tundra of Russia. Yeah. Like, oh my God. <laughs> or like Canada. Like you can't tell <laughs> where you are. Wait, there's a bunch of lakes and a bunch of greenery. Is this Canada? Oh, hold on. There, there's a rack of maple syrup. Nope. It's that Canada. one's also Argentina. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I love love GeoGuessr to death. Um, and they should have it in VR. I don't know why Google hasn't just taken this and made it a, like an official thing. They obviously have the money for it. doesn't do smart application decisions. Let's be honest. They do a lot no, of cool shit, but they back the wrong horse and they kill good shit. Yeah. It's the Google way. Gmail is one of the only perennial things that have stayed around that was worth a damn. Agreed. Um, so one thing that uh, that you should seek out if you're in if you've got VR and you want to check out Google Earth VR, um, this might just be me. I I really do enjoy checking out urban environments specifically more than natural ones. But somebody painstakingly built a 3D tour of uh, Tokyo subway system, or at least pieces of the Tokyo subway system. So I like running around underground Tokyo, checking out all the weird shit they've got in vending machines just alongside the trains um, and just milling around out there. It's great uh, because this isn't um, just in case this isn't clear. The things that I'm I'm doing in Google Earth VR aren't like zoom into a location and oh, look, I've got like a Google Earth satellite view and oh, this place is neat. It's actually got street view integration. So when you go to a place, you just click on your hand to get street view if it's available. And you can physically look around and walk around the roads, which is pretty neat. And so, the big uh, city street views are really in depth. They are high def. They are clear. They are complex. It is just goddamn beautiful. Uh, so yeah, if you want to mill around Germany or Spain or France or rural fucking Ohio, which is where I wouldn't recommend that one. Geo Guesser put me one of the times. So it's literally a half an hour from where I used to live. In oh, Ohio. really? Oh, cool. Yeah, it was great. I was like, oh, I wait know what a this minute. Is. Like, you <laughs> I've got within been 10 there. Meters. It's like, oh, yeah, I did. I know that place. But, uh, 
I know that cornfield. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder this cornfield's if, totally different. I wonder if anybody's ever been just dropped in on their street. <laughs> like, that would wait. be great. That is literally me mowing the lawn out there in this, <laughs> this photo. <laughs> that would be creepy as fuck. That'd be great. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, yeah, Google Earth VR. So, so we're at a decent, I think we're at a, I want to get to this question in chat by Fandemonious. He asked, if you were to lead a team designing a new game, what genre slash style would you do? Um, so I can tell you what genre slash style we did. Um, <laughs> we, we we made a, a little game. It's, it's mm-hmm. you know, we're beginners, so it's not an amazing, super high, big scale game. Um, but basically the premise is it's like the the old save the princess from the castle routine except there's nobody to save the princess from the castle you have to save your damsel self Um, so you escape the castle yourself as the princess and it was just like a little platformer thing um so honestly we want a game jam we would love i i would love to like do that again but better so just because that was our first like thing together, it would be cool to see a team of people that actually know what they're doing basically build that game. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. So this I would this be wasn't... screwed because I would be the guy that would get killed by creep scope because <laughs> I love super complex tech trees and branching ways to upgrade oh, systems yeah. and development where this leads to that. And the game would fall just like fall apart because it would be in development for 20 years. This was not on the schedule. I swear I did not put this in the show notes or even talk to the guys about it. But uh, I was actually doing some game dev stuff this morning um, just to test out a concept, see if I could pull it off. But I now have, um, this is going to be complex, all right? Uh, I now have a series of boxes where if one is lit on fire, the fire will spread to other boxes independently. Each box maintaining its own state and health pool and whether or not it's burning or not. And then if it is burning, it actually makes like an animation of it burning. So you can actually see, just like in Far Cry 2, fire spread throughout a couple different boxes spreading throughout a 2D plane. Oh, that's kind of uh, cool. Which is pretty cool. But uh, my next game dev experiment is going to be to take this and just make it more complex. So let's add water. And if something is burning, like basically Breath of the Wild, the whole thing, make a chemistry system, Make something similar to like Deus Ex or Dishonored, where um, you're taking kind of that immersive sim systems interacting with other systems that you can then play off of each other to make things happen and try to build something smaller in scope that works the same way. Uh, So, yeah, to both your points, we can do that. (laughs) That would be fun. But I kind of answered for you guys just because I wanted to bring that up because it was a fun little memory or whatever but so, independently if, if you got, is there like something missing yes. that you would like to see exist or just something that you would like to be a part of um i'm going wise? to i'm going to answer this and force the answer into best practices because i ruin fun um <laughs> if you have a brand new team who has never built games before um don't don't build an MMO. Don't build anything multiplayer. Don't build don't build complex shit. Pick something super yeah, easy. Make yeah. a racing game. Make a platformer. Don't make an MMORPG with action RPG elements and always online progression systems. Like just your your first game as a team should be your only objective should be let's make video game. Yeah. Doesn't matter Not- what it is. If you finish it, you have won. Yeah, not even a good game. Don't even just, strive for a good game. Just, just game. I'm going. All right. Yeah. I got a character that I can take from the left part of the screen to the right part of the screen, jumping and ducking under these boxes. Game. Game. All right. But to the question, I think he's getting at if you had a full team of game developers who are very experienced and good at what they do and people to consult with and game designers, but you had an idea for a game that you wanted to make real and you had that opportunity, what kind of game would it be? I want the cheese wheel. I want short and stout. I would like to build an immersive sim like Deus Ex style. So uh, whether whether it's shooter or not doesn't really matter to me. But I want to build something that the game has probably an hour, like half an hour to an hour's worth of content in it. 
but the breadth of how you can experience that content is insane. So take Ocarina of Time versus Majora's Mask. Ocarina of Time has a big expansive world, but there's not a whole lot of depth to it. It's basically shallow. It's impressive, but it's shallow. Majora's Mask has a very small amount of surface area to explore, but deeply across three days where there's a lot of interconnected systems and people. I want a game where there's a very small amount of content, because this is an indie game creation. A very small amount of content, but you can experience it and chop it up in a bazillion different ways. Do you want to rescue the princess by engaging in a, a battle of wits through a dialogue system? Cool. Do you just want to shoot the guy? Okay. Do you want to set up a series of pulleys to launch the princess Angry Bird style into like a catcher's net? Okay, whatever. Like I want the game to be completed in a bazillion different ways, but the amount of explorable content is still really small to keep the, the scope constrained. You really liked Hitman, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which fair. is weird to say, because Hitman's areas are pretty sizable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do want to build basically an immersive sim, um, short but stout. I think I would make... Maybe that's what game. we got to do. We got to build a fantasy game about dwarves trying to brew microbrews, and we'd call it short but stout. Boo. Adam, continue <laughs> like before it. Tom talks more. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make... I would probably make a horror game. I'm a big fan of the horror genre, and I don't know. I think I could come up with something that was cool, and I'm I'm big on, like, aesthetics and atmosphere and things like that, and I think that genre leads a lot of, um, I guess, options to, yeah. to scare the player in settings. And I, and I like the idea of focusing on... Like like most games, you play a character, and then the character in that world is the one going through the fear and the stuff, and you're just there kind of experiencing it. I would like one that focuses almost more on breaking the fourth wall to specifically um, interact with the player, not necessarily the player's character. I've got you here. All right, so the the main thing that PC gamers do is I go into an options menu the first time they play, right? So... You load up this game, you go into the options menu. By default, V-Sync and Motion Blur are turned on. When you click, the game won't let you turn them off. <laughs> and then you start like panic clicking and then the game goes, okay, sure. And then it shuts it off. <laughs> There's actually a game called Don't Play This Game or something like that. <laughs> and it's literally the objective of the game is to get the game to play. And it does like some weird stuff with menus and it's kind of creepy and stuff like that. So there, there are games kind of like that already, but I would just love to design something. Yeah, I think that would be well, definitely up your alley. But you, between some of the psychological, I don't want to say psychological, you played some games that have done some really weird shit with your actual computer in the game. Mixing that kind of stuff in a horror game and making it more like that could be super creepy. Mm-hmm. For like sure. if the game was to be able to get hardware access and start like, I mean, not like, Hey, I'm going to turn off your CPU. Fans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've, yeah. But like, I've, it I played turns a game. off a monitor display or something yeah. like that on you. Yeah. I played I've a game actually... that wasn't a horror game, but it did like, it created a text file in a folder that gave me that's like, what on, I was on my drive that. that gave me information. Yeah. Something I've actually like that. seen, um, a game open the CD tray. <laughs> now, not really something you can do today because CD trays don't really exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there was actually a DOS command that would open and close that on Windows. Oh. And uh, somebody turned and leveraged that in a in a game. And you know, you know how fucking scared shit your pants that situation is. Like you're sitting in the dark, you're playing this fucking game, and then. The fucking CD tray comes out and bumps your knee because you got headphones on. You're just like, ah, fuck. Oh, what the hell is this? It's great. <laughs> and that's how CD trays get broke. I mean, that's how yeah. cup holders get broke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Eric, what kind of game would, would you want to make? I don't know. Um, I love living worlds. I don't think a single MMO has ever gotten a living world right. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I would love to explore that, but at the same time, another game that i enjoy super depth on is like the crafting games like factorio is a game i super enjoy getting deep and trying to understand that 
So I don't know. Probably it'd probably be something in like the MMO world, but more of the crafting elements into it. Okay. Which in other words would mean it would be an MMO that would be void of players because most people that play MMOs aren't looking for something that fucking depth. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Fair enough. But yeah, well, just like most don't... most players of shooters aren't looking for um like a, a roguelike experience with an auction house. Yeah. So yeah. instead, Warcraft or um Diablo players are looking for that. I, I was yeah. You know, there's COD. There's Tarkov. I think there's definitely there's definitely room in gaming to pull off really weird, stupid ideas that shouldn't ever fucking work. Like Tarkov as an idea, not only is the scope creep just insane, but it just doesn't sound like a game that anyone would want to buy. Right? <laughs> well, and what they're uh, doing with the way they're expanding the maps they're actually altering some of the content in the map to where they could do something like what uh, Fortnite does with altering their map, but actually put a narrative around the missions and give a purpose to wipes with the way that they change the maps and rewrite the missions to go with those missions or the way it's happening. It'd be super fucking cool. Woods currently has that with some stuff that they've added to the map and they gave narrative reason to it. That is really cool. So I would like to see them expand on that and also give more reason to have wipes. So, yeah, that would be really fucking cool. Ah, uh, well, there's one other game I played I want to talk about. Yeah. Just because um, talked about it a lot, but holy shit, ran a five stack on Dota last night. First five stack of Dota I have ran in years. And it was pretty good. Went pretty well. Um, it was funny. We had five people and there's five positions in Dota. So we took a random number generator to determine who was going to play what. Oh, okay. You didn't have dedicated people for yeah. oh, no, we, certain we things? We did have dedicated people. Oh, okay. so whatever you number just, you got was your position. To switch things up. Yeah. Okay. Turns out, random number generator put everyone in their standard roles. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Not, it was a, like, not a person, not a place. That's called destiny, my friends. Wreck. No shite. But no, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, still enjoying it. So yeah, just wanted to call out. Finally got a five man. So, I hell yeah. That had to have been a relief to just not have that, like, random person. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you, you know don't... what you're getting going straight in. Like, you you know, these are the people I'm playing with. These are This yep. is how they are and what they do. I can communicate and... with all of them with the understanding that, that we are on the same page. And Dota does a really cool thing where when you play as a five, you queue against a five. Because being on the same page with communication... That's Huge the advantage. game. That's Huge the game. Mm -hmm. So they try to queue fives against fives. That's good. So, yeah, it, it worked pretty well. So uh, did you guys rank up? Did you? We haven't been playing ranked. Uh, so oh, okay. Bobby's rank is substantially higher than ours, and we would feel really bad if that happened. <laughs> because his rank would tank. It uh, would be like taking someone who is in GC rank area and playing with gold plats. Okay, I see. You don't do that. <laughs> and I mean, uh, and <laughs> Davis saying upon. we never asked him to to play anymore. You gotta get back in the uh, get back in the Discord, buddy. Like we're we're always playing. I wouldn't say always. Some of us play are a lot. playing Cyberpunk and tabletop rather than dedicating their lives to Dota like they should be I, doing. I you got the same care I do. You are now obligated to play this every day. I, uh, no, I but you're obligated to play out. Tarkov every day. I've been putting a lot of time one? into pen and paper RPGs. So I've got a Pathfinder 2 game, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I've got a D&D &D game, which happens occasionally. And then I've got a Cyberpunk Red, which is the Cyberpunk tabletop game uh, happening weekly. Is so. that the one that like created the genre? Yes. Neat. Yeah, it's the one the game's loosely i don't want to say loosely based on but it's it's that kind of set it's that set that's where it's, it's at yeah it's not loosely based on anything so the tabletop game has an actual plot line like cyberpunk 2020 has an actual like here's what happened in night city here's the big characters here's the names you should know here's the sub stories here's the campaigns that make up their crazy wacky adventures 
And Cyberpunk 2077 is literally based on the events of those games. It is just in the future when those events happen to be not ancient history, but recent history. Okay. That's kind of neat. I didn't know that. Yeah. So like Johnny Silverhand, which is not a spoiler. Like it's, it's in the fucking the promo trailer. material. Yeah. Yeah. So fucking Keanu Reeves playing Johnny Silverhand. Johnny Silverhand is one of the uh, more famous names in the cyberpunk lore and text oh, and canon. Okay. Yeah. Neat. So people probably thought this was going to be a fan or like a uh, nod to fans. And then he turned out to be a pretty main fucking character in the game. Yeah. Everybody thought I was oh, impressed. Wait, I thought he was going to be like a small cameo or something. Keanu exactly. Reeves. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, oh, hey, Keanu Reeves is in Cyberpunk. It's like uh, Hideo Kojima's in Death Stranding. It's like, nah, it's not this. Actually, Hideo Kojima's in Cyberpunk too. I saw yeah. that. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything, but I did see that. Um, <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, Johnny Silverhand, Keanu Reeves, like, that's uh, there's a lo- whole lot of time there. It's not just a tiny cameo. Not gonna say anything else for spoiler reasons. Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's pretty much all of our games. Yeah, we didn't Tom, play a lot. So this do you week. have anything? I did Beat Saber. That's hey. it. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. I fixed my mods. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So they'll break again in two weeks? Yeah, basically. Every time the game updates? Dude, I every time I play Beat Saber, granted, it's not nearly as regular as Tom. I have to completely fuck with the mods. I lost all my songs, re download music. Every oh, time. Oh, you lost. Yeah, there's you won't lose songs anymore theoretically, but just well, in I case, don't... just in case Beat Games updates and decides to destroy my third party songs, I always have a live backup. So if you're missing any songs, let me know, and I will get those to you. Just okay. saying. All that said, uh, I think it's time for some news. News. So um, let's go ahead and start with. Um... Nintendo politely declines to work with Kanye West. Who would have thunk it? This happened so a I, while ago, long while ago, but the story is well, just I remember, not coming to light. I remember a while ago he talked about wanting to make a video game. Yep. I didn't realize he had went to Nintendo. I mean, <laughs> it makes sense. If yeah. someone is like, like tangentially interested in uh, video games, they think the console owners. They think Sony or Microsoft and Nintendo. And Nintendo probably has the most like reverence out of most people because they grew up with it. So it makes sense he would ask them. Ooh. It would have been absolutely fucking bananas if they worked with them. They, uh, like, I would have loved to say, seen it. Uh, Reggie Filsamy did say, you know, Kanye is a creator. He's an artist. And you, you can definitely tell he knows what he wants to do. But... Uh, Fortunately, we had too many things in the pipeline to work with them on this one. <laughs> so um, they're being nice. Yeah, is that they're, they're is being that nice. nice it's a courteous to is that nice talk to this dude's fucking insane? I don't know why he would think it we'd work be. with him. No, be. no comments. I will not comment on any future presidents of the United States of America. Kanye or Reggie? Because <laughs> I vote for one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But um, I. Right. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, the class action lawsuit that alleged cyberpunk publishers lied and misled. Boy, oh boy. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we alluded last week. It's a thing. It's happening. It's happening! Just not in a good way. <clears throat> Hopefully, uh, this doesn't shake out too hard for CD Projekt Red because while the game's buggy, while the game has issues, it's still enjoyable. I want them to make more. I want to play more of their games. I don't want this to be terrible for them. Yeah. I just want them to fix their shit. Um, anything else anyone wants to add? I don't think there's too much more uh, to say on that. That's one. about it. I mean, if they did intentionally mislead gamers, then I hope that <laughs> the right thing is done, however that happens, but hopefully that is yeah. not the case. It's yeah. not that I don't want there to be ramifications for actions. Yeah. I just would prefer that they still make games. Because while this game has issues, I still think they're a great game dev company. I would love to see them make more. I would still love to play more. Yeah. Whereas someone like Bethesda, I enjoyed their games, but if they was to go away, I don't know if I'd shed a tear. Yeah, I don't think I'd notice. I wouldn't want the Elder Scrolls to go away. 
or modern Fallout. But I wouldn't be upset if somebody other than Bethesda took those reins. That's fair. That's a good way to look at it. Get the Far Cry studio to start yeah. working on um, Elder Scrolls. You want to trust Ubisoft with fucking anything? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Good point. <laughs> um, so Heroic Sync wants us to call out or talk about <laughs> the uh, console from KSC. The KSC console. I don't know why we I thought didn't. It had the fucking chicken warmer on it. <laughs> How much is it again? $2,000? Isn't it too grand? I, frankly, no, it doesn't fucking matter. Whatever the price is, that's what you're paying. If you don't own this console and you want to call yourself a gamer, get the fuck out of my podcast. You got to buy the what? KFC console. It's the only way to play. I'm saying this as a PC gamer who hates consoles. Nah, I'm throwing away my PC and I'm buying a KFC console tonight. Really? It's happening. <laughs> yep. Do it. I dare you. Heard you um, win. So what exactly what, was the console just like a fucking PC that runs Steam? Probably. Uh, I'm pretty sure. But it's got a chicken yeah, warmer. That, it, yeah, it, it does have a chicken warmer. And um, I do want I think what Epoch just called out in chat is very important. Um, yes, Microsoft did buy Bethesda. Yeah. Um because that seems like it was going to be a move to bolster their first party library in like the next five years or so. Yeah. Not an immediate thing, but definitely down the road it's a long-term plan um and then yeah the final bit of news um star citizen uh missed their window for beta and they say fuck your release dates we're gonna release the game when it's finished shocker for a game in development for like 10 years but it is a um juxtaposition to cd project red which had due dates and pushed a game out the door to meet the dates I feel so conflicted on this. So I always yell at Star Citizen for being the game that will never fucking release because it's always in development. On on the other hand, I wasted a whole lot of time trying to fix a quest from a game that just fucking came out already, even though it wasn't ready. So give me what I want without any of the things that I don't want, game developers. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would develop game. just for me. <laughs> De no, no delay, only perfect games. Like, I'm the dog who wants no give, only fetch. I want the games <laughs> to come out as soon as possible, but to be completely bug-free and to be perfect in every way. Tom wants 120-hour work weeks. I, I want... <laughs> no, no, I also want the devs to have 20-hour work weeks and nine months of vacation, but I want them to spend all their time developing the game, too and to get bonuses for how big it is and how awesome it is, but to not have those bonuses impact the quality or release schedule. And so also, here, so how, do you, how do you plan to contend with the space-time continuum in reality as so, we know it? Here uh, is how, here's what Tom wants. <laughs> Tom wants 2021 to release Pong. Because that's what you're getting with those requests. No, no, no. I want, I want a game as big as Cyberpunk 2077 developed in a matter of weeks where the devs get nine months of vacation out of a year and the game costs $60 only, no microtransactions and all DLC is free, available to all consoles with cross-play, with cloud saves, uh, and you buy it once and it works everywhere. Including Why do we let Tom offers. talk? Why do we let Tom talk? That, that's really what I want. And I don't know why it's so hard to pull off. I mean, just like Adam said, the only thing we have to do is get around this whole space time continuum thing and capitalism and people got to eat thing. Uh, and then it's done. Like, it's super easy. God damn it. <laughs> super. Like, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Why are we talking? Um, well, does anyone but Tom have anything to say on the way out? In other words, Adam, I have, do you have so many to things to say. Um... No, other than maybe just kill some time so Tom doesn't say more things about that. <laughs> okay, okay, good, 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 good. I do, yeah. I, I'm down for that. I was going to be nice, but I can I keep going if you guys want. No. no. Well, in only that case, if it pertains think... to Dark Souls. All right. No, get... Okay, it's rundown time, ladies and gentlemen. So, it's like a $60 um, Dark Souls where. <laughs> okay. If you're watching us on Twitch, Go on to our YouTube, 72 Pin Connector doc, or to God, 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. We have podcasts, we have clips, we have montage, we have a lot of stuff. Check it out there. And you can play that if little game there. we talked about earlier. Well, that's on the website. 
on the website. But, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're on YouTube watching us, thank you. But stop into our Twitch, twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector, and you can watch us live every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Be part of the game, be part of the chat, get into the conversation. It's a good time. Best time to consume or best way to consume this podcast, bar none. Um, we have a Discord. You should join our Discord. You might ask, well, Eric, how do you join your Discord? I don't know what the link is. Well, you actually go to our website, 72pinkconnector.com, and it links you everywhere. So go there, do that, join all our things, play our game, buy our merch, like, comment, subscribe, <laughs> be with us. <laughs> and that said, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we got for you this week. I think that's it. So... Unless any of y'all got any parting shots. I'd say till next week. Game on. See everyone.